Here we have a hypothesis test for a mean. The problem states that students are supposed to spend an average of two hours studying for every hour of lecture. However, Juan thinks that students spend on average less than two hours. So he surveys 36 students and he finds that the average of the 36 students was 1.8 hours with a standard deviation of 1.3 hours. What can be concluded with a level of significance alpha equal to 0 0.1. In other words, here we'd like to know, is Juan's claim that students spend less than two hours a claim that should be rejected, or would we tend to support or fail to reject that claim? And going through the first four steps of hypothesis testing, setting up the hypothesis test, we first write the word claim, then we write the claim in symbolic form, and since this claim deals with an average, we use the Greek letter mu. And Juan's claim is that students spend less than two hours, so our claim symbolically will be mu is less than two. Next, we write the word opposite, and we write the opposite of the claim. And we do that by writing the same two symbols, mu and two. And then we insert the opposite inequality symbol as the inequality symbol found in the claim. And since the inequality symbol found in the claim was less than, which points to the left, the opposite will point to the right, greater than. And since the claim had no equal sign, the opposite will have an equal sign. Next, we identify the null hypothesis. And to do that, we look for the inequality symbol that contains the equal sign. And we see that in this case, the null hypothesis is the opposite of the claim. And finally, the fourth step is to identify the alternative, H subscript 1, which in this case is the claim. We'll now do this hypothesis test using the TI-83. So going to the TI-83 and clicking on the statistics button and then going to the test menu, the test that we'll be using will be a z-test because the sample size used to test this claim was more than 30. So selecting the Z test, the input is going to be either in the form of a data list or summary statistics. And in this case, we're going to be using summary statistics. The mu subscript zero stands for the number that we find in the null hypothesis. And the number found in the null hypothesis is the number two, sigma, is the population standard deviation. And although we're not told the population standard deviation in this problem, we do have a sample of more than 30 students. So therefore the standard deviation of the sample, which is 1.3, can be used as a good approximation at the standard deviation for the entire population. X bar is the sample mean and here the average of the 36 students was 1.8. And finally, the number of students contained in the sample is 36. Finally, we need to decide which of these symbols is the symbol to use in this test. And the answer to that question is found in the alternative hypothesis. So when we need to select one of these symbols, we'll look to the alternative hypothesis. Notice that each of these symbols does not contain an equal sign, and the alternative hypothesis also will not contain an equal sign. So therefore, the symbol that we'll be using in this case will be the less than symbol. And then finally, we ask the calculator to calculate the different values for our output. When we do so, the first thing we see is that this is indeed a z-test. Then we see the alternative hypothesis, which tells us that this was a test that was a left-tailed test. We see that the Z test statistic is negative 0.92. And because it's a Z-score, we take it to the second decimal place. P is the p-value or probability value. And the probability value gives us the probability that a sample like this could exist. In other words, a sample of 36 students who would have an average of 1.8 and a standard deviation of 1.3, what is the probability that that sample would exist if indeed the null hypothesis is true? And we see that that probability is approximately 17.8% if you were to round to the nearest tenth of a percent. And when we compare the p-value of 17.8% to the level of significance alpha, 
which is 0.1, and we have to be careful here because 0.1 as a decimal is 10%, we see that the p-value is greater than alpha. And the p-value rule says that if p-value is greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we would support the null hypothesis. So what does that mean in terms of one's claim? Well, that means that the null hypothesis was not rejected, and therefore, since if one of these statements is true, the other one must be false. So at a significance level of 10%, we would support the null, fail to reject if you like, which means we would reject the claim, which is the alternative hypothesis. So the conclusion of this problem would be that we would reject one's claim that students spend less than two hours studying for every hour of lecture.